Hello, good morning to all uh, learners who have joined us on the Facebook live session today. Uh, we welcome you to this session. Uh, this particular session that we are going to conduct is not related specifically to any of the programs or it is basically for disseminating information and sharing of information related to a number of queries that may be arising in your mind at this point of time related to insurance during the COVID-19 period. Now, for uh, to begin with, the learners who have not yet gone for the insurance policies, first we'll like to explain them what insurance actually means. Now, insurance is a contract between the insurance company that will be providing you the insurance and the person who wants to go for the insurance. In lieu of the risk cover that the insurance company is going to provide to you, you will have to make premium payments to them. Now this is basically what insurance is and we would like to suggest you to go for any sound financial planning, insurance should be there because in case if you are the sole breadwinner of the family and if something untoward happens to you during this period, then the family who members who are dependent on you will be left in a very vulnerable position. So that is the time where the benefits that you will get out of the insurance policies will come to the rescue of your family members. Now this was the one thing. Now what are the queries that generally people are facing at this point of time and also when you will think about insurance, the first thing that will come to your mind is that during this lockdown period and where the movements are so restricted at this point of time, how can one go for an insurance policy? Now the central government has permitted 20 life, insu uh, life insurance, the private insurance companies which are there uh, who already registered with the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India and 8 general insurance companies to provide uh, online facility or EKYC e facility to the uh, people who want to apply for insurance. Now, uh, in any insurance policy, there are a number of factors that they will take into consideration in order to assess the risk that they will be for the assessment of the risk for which the cover is to be provided. Now for that purpose, the information generally that they will be asking you for is your identity proof, the proof of your age and address. In addition to this, they will be requiring a number of information regarding the occupation in which you are occupied, the hobbies that you have and other things like that. Now, this queries or this information can be provided uh, through the Aadhaar link that is there. So, most of the uh, uh, care of the information will be taken care of by the Aadhaar card. The next question that arises in the mind that for almost all life insurance and health insurance policies, uh, one needs to go for a medical test. Now at this point of time, no one would like to visit to the hospital or the clinic for getting a um, medical test done and also the insurers have taken care of this uh, in order to maintain the social distancing and at the same time. Uh, not allowing their potential customers to go away and to cater to their needs of insurance at this point of time, they have gone for telemedical checkups. Now in telemedical, what they have done is that the insurers have tied up with the web aggregators through which they are providing the telemedical facilities. So the doctor who is appointed for you will call you up on your phone and will seek the information related to your physical health, they could be questions related to your family history or the chronic diseases or what treatments you have gone through. So these kind of questions once but it is requested that all of you should give the correct information because later on if it is found that the information is not correct, probably the claims can also be denied by the insurance companies. So it's better to give all the information correctly. So this is the process of e-filing and this is taking care of during this times of the pandem pandemic when all the 
most of the parts of the country are covered. So you can uh, visit the site website of the company from which you want to seek the insurance and file the uh, EKYC form for the policies. Now next question is uh, will these uh, insurance companies provide you with the life insurance and health insurance during this time of the pandemic. Uh, if your application is in process and during the time of this process you are infected with coronavirus then the insurer has the right or the insurer will try to hold the policy or at times he may even reject the policy. But in other cases if the process has been completed and the uh, policy has been issued then the claims will stand and you will be getting the claims for that. Now another major uh, issue that uh, uh, confronts uh, or query we can say is that uh, will premiums that will be charged will be the same? No, because all the over the world the people are facing this is a global issue of pandemic and naturally the risk that is involved is very high. So a higher risk that the insurer is taking he or she uh, the insurer will try to charge a higher premium for you. Uh, normally what people may have paid earlier the, the premium at this point of time will be high and a premium also depends upon the age factor. Now there uh, as I was saying that you will need to give information regarding your occupation also and also the physical and conditions. Now uh, do uh, insurers providing health insurance if you are already having a health insurance policy will your insurer provide health insurance cover during COVID-19. Now for this the insurance regulatory and development authority of India had clearly said in the guidelines and I will uh, read it out for you uh, and I am quoting whether hospitalization is covered in a where hospitalization is covered in a product insurers shall ensure the cases related to coronavirus disease shall be expeditiously handled and secondly the cost of admissible expenses during the course of treatment including the treatment during quarantine period shall be settled in accordance to the applicable terms and conditions of policy contract and the extent regulatory framework." Unquote. So almost all the uh, insur health insurance policies that you are holding and if there is a cover for the diseases uh, health insurance then it will be taken care of uh, during this COVID-19. Now um, the next question that is uh, can will the expenses that uh, one incurs towards the treatment of the coronavirus will be borne by the insurer. Yes, as we have already said that the cost uh, including the cost of the treatment, the hospitalization and also treatment during the quarantine period will be covered under your insurance policies if you have a an health insurance policy with you. Uh, then uh, the, regarding the people who are already holding the life insurance policies. Now in case if a person is holding a life insurance policy will the policy debt benefits remain the same as it was earlier or will it be in any way affected due to coronavirus if the death occurs due to coronavirus. Now there, it, this is where the insurers have been really very proactive and taken a very good stand that uh, they have said that the uh, death due to coronavirus will be treated under any term life insurance policies will be treated in uh, as they treat in case the other general deaths that occur. Uh, this claim will be admissible if the policy holder gets infected due to coronavirus after the policy has been issued and the waiting period of one year has 
be uh, completed. In that case, the debt claim will be settled, but no other specific terms and conditions have been specified for treatment uh, for uh, handling of claims during the COVID-19 in case of the term insurance policies. So for now, uh, all those who are having these policies, the uh, benefits that you are going to, your dependents are going to get in case of the debt uh, of the policy or uh, person who is holding the policy, the benefits would not be affected in this case. Now, uh, the um, how do one go for settling of the claims related to health insurance? Now, the, for this again, we would, what would we like to say, I would like to read out from the guidelines that have been issued by the uh, insurance uh, regulator that, uh, and I am reading it out, that decision on the authorization for cashless treatment shall be communicated to the network provider within two hours from the time of the receipt of the authorization request and la last necessary requirement for the hospital either to the insurer or to the TPA that is the third party administrator whichever is earlier and secondly the decision on final discharge shall be communicated to the network provider within two hours from the time of the receipt of the final bill and last necessary requirement from the hospital either to the insurer or to, to the TPA whichever is earlier. Now this is what uh, uh, unquotes. Uh, so you, uh, if there is a cashless uh, settlement then you need not worry much for the settlement of the claims because the hospital will be directly submitting to the insurer all the documents that are required and the claim will be automatically settled. But in case if the hospitalization charges exceed the sum assured of the policy, in that case the additional payments which are required will have to be made by the uh, insured. Uh, then uh, next is that uh, in case if you, uh, you want to submit for the reimbursement of the policy claims, then in that case the most of the insurers today are uh, taking the claim, uh, uh, have put up the claim forms, online forms, otherwise you can communicate through mails, they are also communicating through WhatsApp. So you can use any of these means to uh, go uh, to initiate the claims that you want to make. But when you are making the claims, then you will have to take care that when you are going to the hospital also, you will have to keep certain things along with you like the ID proof, the health card or the policy document, what were your previous records uh, of hospitalization, that all you have to uh, carry along if you are getting infected and you want to make the reimbursement later, a claim for the reimbursements. Now the claim for reimbursement, as I was already saying that you will, uh, from the hospital side, you will also have to, when you are making the claim to the, uh, submitting the claim form to the insurer, you will also have to submit the discharge summary, the bills, the various other documents of the prescriptions of the doctors, all will have to be enclosed. Now. These can be submitted online, but it again depends on the insurer. Some of the insurance companies are, settle, uh, are processing the claims and also settling them based on the scanned documents that are submitted by the uh, claimant, but some insurance companies do process the claim, but the settlements will be made only on the production of the original documents. So it depends, uh, it varies from insurer to insurer, what are their terms and conditions related to that. Uh, and usually uh, all insurers have advised their third party administrators to process the claims within three to four days so that they can settle the claims faster. Now this was re uh, related to the claims. Now in case, 
there is one major query that is being faced by most of the insurers today is that uh, force majeure. Now is this condition applicable because this is a condition which is there in most of the uh, life insurance policies this is, con is there. Uh, the, what it means is that the event and effect the occurrence uh, is not certain and the conditions are uncontrollable. So, but in the ta this time uh, the life insurance council has said clearly stated that all insurers private or public should, uh, up, sh sh uh, means uh, people will uh, this will not apply presently to all the uh, to cases that are being ha uh, affected or cases that are related to coronavirus. In those cases this will not apply. So that is there. Then what is the, uh, uh, we have already dealt with uh, what are uh, the queries relating to the settlement of claims. But in the present circumstances, it is not possible for both the insured. It may happen uh, that the insurer, uh, insured and his nominee both may get infected and then uh, who will be the claimant for these policies. Now uh, for this the answer would be that in case if the person holding the insurance policy and the nominee for that insurance policy if both unfortunately die then in that case the claim can be made by the legal heirs. So we will go into those details when we discuss about the processing of the uh, death claims. Uh, now another question very important question is uh, which, which is posed to most of us today is that in case if the premium is due and we are not able to make the premium renewal of the policies then what? So in usually all life insurance policies uh, there is a grace period given for making the payments of premiums either it is 15 days to 30 days but in the present circumstances the insurance regulatory and development authority of India had asked all insurers to extend this grace period and uh, the, if the premium falls due it is clearly given there uh, that if the premium falls due in the month of March 2020 the grace period shall be allowed till 31st May 20 is not able to make the premium payment and if that person dies then will the other person be able to make the claim. Now last premium if it is not paid death benefits are not given. If the grace period is over, uh, if the debt occurs during the grace period then the policy will definitely be treated as it is fully in force and the claims will be settled. But if it is after the grace period is over that means the policy has lapsed and, and in this situation the decision totally depends upon the insurer because in certain situations or certain circumstances the insurer can decide upon making settling the claims and also uh, it depends upon the sum assured if it is a lower 15 below 15,000 then they may 15 lakhs it may go for settlement or if it is higher amounts then the decision totally will be taken by the insurer. Uh, other major queries are uh, regarding a recently launched scheme which is the Arogya Sanjeevni policy. Now this is uh, what uh, are the basic features of this policy. Arogya Sanjeevni policy it was launched in April. Now this is a standard health insurance policy which the IRDA has said that uh, IRDAI sorry uh, has said that all the 29 general and health insurance companies 
which are the list of which is given on their website should market this product but there will be no variation in the terms and conditions of this policy so it will be a standard policy irrespective of the insurance company that is providing that policy in this policy the uh, person who has acquired the age of 18 can claim uh, take this policy and maximum after the age of 65 person will not be allowed to take go for this policy so between 18 to 65 one can go for this policy uh, this will be a uh, arogya sanjeevni policy followed by the name of the insurance company that is going to provide that insurance now in this the sum assured will be varying from 1 lakh to up to five, uh, to 5 lakhs and like any other health insurance policies, the premium would be paid yearly. This policy also will take, uh, uh, will uh, bear the cost of hospitalization and treatment during COVID-19. So this also is a very good policy and it can be gone for. Now uh, we have already discussed what will be the time that will be required for the settlement of claims. For the settlement of claims, uh, as I have already mentioned that the insurance regulator have specified that within two hours of receiving the discharge uh, letter from the hospital, it has to set, be settled by the insurer. Similarly, when uh, the final settlements are to be made, then again it is the same time period within which it has to be made. Now uh, regarding the process of filing for the insurance claim, uh, what we were discussing earlier also, just as the EKYC is to be filed for taking an insurance policy, most of the insurers have uh, on their website sub kept the, uh, that uh, people who want to go for the claims can directly apply for the claims on their websites. So uh, now the question is at this point of time what the question is how can one go for the debt claim that one wants to make. Now in case of debt claims a person has to uh, the process starts with the intimation one has to send the intimation of the death of the policy holder in whose name the policy is there the intimation of the death of that person is to be sent to the company who is going to, uh, from which the insurance policy has been purchased now when you are giving the intimation to the company you have to give the details like the name of the person whose was holding that policy, then the number of policies that are there in the name of that person, then your, the person who is submitting the claim, the relation of that person with the person who has passed away. In addition to that, you also have to clearly mention the date on which the death has occurred, then the place where the person passed away and the cause of death even if it is coronavirus because you should mention it because in mostly all the life and health insurance uh, policies as of today the uh, coverage is given to this uh, death due to COVID-19. Now when you submit the claim form to the insurance company then on intimation the company will be looking out for the various details regarding the uh, claim that has been made like the status of the policy, whether all the premiums have been paid or not, then the personal details of the deceased life that was assured, other policies that are held and from your side if you are submitting the claim then you will have to give the proof of your age, the, then the title to that policy if you have the proper title then that has to be mentioned. Then uh, after making all these checks the insurance company would require you to submit certain documents. Now uh, as I was already saying that you will have to give the proof of death 
For this, you have to give a certified copy from the municipal or register of births and deaths. That certificate will have to be submitted to the insurer. Then the claimant statement has to be there. Uh, claimant statement regarding the time, date, cause of death has to be given to the insurer. Then the proof of the title. If you are the nominee, then the policy, original policy document is to be submitted to the hmm, insurer. If not, then you will have to give the administrator's general certificate, which is provided the amount does not exceed 15,000 rupees. Otherwise, there has to be a letter of administration that has to be uh, given where the deceased has made a will but uh, and he, has, he or she has not appointed an executor or even if an executor is appointed uh, and he or she is uh, incapable to act or refuses to act or he or she has passed away before the testament tester and before proving that will, in that case then you have to give the letter of administration. Otherwise the succession certificate under section 372 can be given to the uh, uh, insurer. Now in case if there is no such evidence with you, then the claim payable and uh, can be settled on the basis of an indemnity bond with a surety. But it also varies again from insurer to insurer. It depends upon the insurer whether what it is going to allow and what not. Uh, the legal success uh, as I have already said that will work. Uh, but uh, in case of proof of age if it has not been submitted earlier that has to be given and if you do not have an original policy document, uh, then it is not necessary uh, to for the insurer to issue a duplicate certificate to you at this point of time, but also uh, you can submit the claims for that with the requisite documentary proofs that you are the legal heir to that. And in addition to that, they also need you uh, to give you, uh, you to give the discharge receipt. But uh, in that case also the uh, regulator has clearly stated that the life insurance companies can no longer force claimants to into signing a receipt for having received full and final payment as a precondition for settling the claims. Now that right is also uh, right to pursue the claim is with the insured that is the person who is holding the insurance policy. Once this is done, then the claim will be settled. Now for that you may have to submit a cancelled check or otherwise submit uh, uh, the documents on their website so that the, uh, the payments can be directly transferred to the ac uh, account of the person who is making the claim. So these were the certain queries which I thought would be helpful to you at this point of time. Maybe I may have missed certain points, but uh, this is all that I would like to say from my side. There may be a number of other queries also which may have not been addressed. Um, so you can visit the websites of the various insurance companies they will be providing you, yes, there is a point that uh, all these uh, uh, conditions uh, re related to the premium payment, it has just clicked my mind that uh, premium payments, if you are not able to make the premium payments regarding the uh, payments that are due uh, as for your health policies, then in that case there is a a provision that uh, has been timely made uh, that you can vary the or change the mode and frequency of making the payments, premium payments. 
uh, that will be initiated by the insurer uh, uh, or you can say it, but the consent will be taken from you. If you are not able, you are making a monthly payment for your policy and you are at this point of time, you are not in a position to make the monthly payment, you can change the mode and frequency of that payment. You can go for quarterly, half yearly or yearly payments. Now in that case also, the IRDA has clearly, the IRDA has, has clearly stated that uh, any policy whose premium payment is due till uh, uh, March 2020, they can uh, for the month, uh, 12 months period, it will be uh, up to March 2021. This will be enforced that they, will, they can go for a change in the premium payment mode, but they can continue with that uh, later also but for the time being till March 2021, it will be there. So all insurers have been issued directions on that. So these were certain queries I thought which uh, I came across while reading various, uh, web, uh, seeing various websites and articles. Uh, maybe I may have missed certain queries which you, which you feel were important and may have not been addressed. For that, all my apologies for that and thanks for joining with me on this session. Uh, but before we leave, let me thank the people here, Rajesh and his team who are bringing this live program across to you. With this, we come to the end of this program. Thank you and see you in future. Yeah.